Do you enjoy thrift store shopping? I love thrifting and I'm always on the lookout for interesting and one-of-a-kind items I can use to decorate my home. But you know what? Let's not forget about the ordinary items that we often overlook on the thrift store shelves. Things like cheap resin decor, plastic picture frames, even broken items. These things are readily available and very affordable. And so today I want to show you how you can take some seemingly unremarkable items and turn them into beautiful decor for your home. So if you're ready to take your thrift store finds from ordinary to extraordinary, let's get started. Here's a list of some of the ordinary and very inexpensive thrift store items I'll be using in today's video. I purchased this small lamp at the thrift store for just a little over $3 and used Gorilla Glue to attach a small ceramic bird to one of its metal leaves. In case you're interested, I have these little birds linked in my Amazon store. I also thrifted this little birdcage for $2.99 that I wanted to use as a lampshade. First, I removed all the ribbons and faux flowers. Then I mixed a little salt wash with some white latex paint. This mixture would add some texture, helping to unite the three separate pieces. If you don't have salt wash, you could also add plaster of Paris or baking soda to your paint to get a similar effect. Once the paint was dry, I pushed the birdcage onto the top of the lamp, adjusting the metal leaves to hold it firmly in place. Next, I mixed a little black latex paint with some clear wax to create my own black antiquing wax. I lightly dabbed it on and then immediately wiped most of it away. Next, I soaked some angel hair vine in water for a couple of minutes to soften it up, and then I wrapped it around the socket cover to form a circle and wired the ends together. To mimic the look of a bird's nest, I added some moss on top of the vines and then hot glued a couple small bird eggs to the moss. For safety's sake, I used an extremely low wattage bulb, just 4 watts, and the bulb is not in direct contact with any of the vine or moss. Still, just to be safe, I would treat it like a candle and not leave it unattended. For this next project, I combined thrift store metal butterflies with some Dollar Tree trays that were left over from a previous project. I painted the inside and outside of the trays with celery green chalk paint. Once the paint was dry, I cut out squares of tissue paper to cover the bottom of each tray. This tissue paper comes in William Morris patterns, and I'll have it linked in my description box. I brushed the bottom of each tray with a light even coat of Mod Podge and carefully pressed in the tissue paper, smoothing out any wrinkles with my fingers. Then I trimmed away the excess tissue paper with a utility knife. I spray painted the metal butterflies with Zinsser White Primer and once that paint was dry, I brushed the front side of the wings with Mod Podge and adhered some of the same tissue paper. I just use my paintbrush to smooth out any wrinkles and apply additional Mod Podge over the top of the tissue paper. I use scissors to trim away most of the excess tissue paper around the butterflies and left them to dry. Once the Mod Podge was completely dry, I used sandpaper along the edges to remove the remaining excess tissue paper. Then I hot glued the butterflies to the sides of the tray. 
I had originally left the butterfly bodies white and felt that they were just too bright, so at the last minute, I painted them beige. I purchased this lovely old jewelry box at the thrift store for just $2.59. Some of you will probably think that I should have left the natural wood, but I really thought a little paint would give it an updated look. Before painting, I removed the storage components, the glass panes from the doors, and the door hardware. I debated removing the mirrors and decided to leave them, but let me know, do you think I should take the mirrors out? Then I painted it with two coats of celery green chalk paint. I didn't remove the door hinges because I prefer to paint over the hinges and make them disappear anyway. While the paint was drying, I began working on some flowers to put inside the jewelry box. I had thrifted this odd floral a few years ago and was never quite sure what to do with it. The base resembled a piece of bark with some moss and a small bird nest attached. The flowers and greenery were looking really sad, so I removed most of them and added some new stems to the base. I reassembled the jewelry box, lightly distressed it with some sandpaper, and applied a coat of clear wax to seal the chalk paint. Then I just sat my floral arrangement inside to use the jewelry box as a vintage looking terrarium. For this project, I wanted to combine a cheap silver tray with a plastic oval frame. The back of the frame was attached with three screws, so rather than gluing it, I decided to screw the frame to the platter. I used the frame back to mark where the screws would go and drilled through the platter in those spots. To make sure it looked nice, I went ahead and attached the frame without the glass or the artwork. Then I took it outside and sprayed the joined pieces with Zinsser Primer. Once the primer was dry, I gave it a couple coats of some green acrylic enamel paint that I had on hand. While the paint was drying, I printed out a vintage pastoral image to fit inside the frame. I'll have the image I used linked in the description box. I removed the frame from the platter and added the print and glass and then reattached them. I ran a small bead of caulk between the frame and platter to fill the gap and make the two pieces appear as one. I waited about 30 minutes for the caulk to dry and then painted over it with the same green paint. Once that was dry, I brushed on some white wax and wiped away the excess. It's quite lightweight, so I just used Gorilla Glue to attach a D-ring to the back so that it can be hung from a wall. was loving the William Morris pattern tissue paper that I used on the butterfly boxes, so I wanted to use some more tissue paper in another project. I thrifted this pretty frame for just $3 and removed the art print. 
Then I sprayed the back of the mat with spray adhesive and carefully covered it with a piece of the tissue paper. Next, I cleaned the glass really well and applied some IOD rub-on transfers to the front of the glass. I used a bird and some typography left over from two different IOD packages. Rub-on transfers of any kind adhere really well to glass. Originally, I hadn't planned on painting the pretty gold frame, but then I decided it would look even prettier painted blue to accentuate the tissue paper. Once the paint was dry, I used a combination of a wet wipe and fine grit sandpaper to lightly distress the frame and bring out some of the original gold paint. Then I sealed it with clear wax. I reassembled the frame, adding first the glass, then the tissue paper covered mat, and finally the cardboard backing. After folding down the staples, I applied some brown paper tape around the edges and over the staples for additional support and to clean up the back side. I thrifted this resin sheep for just $3.79. He was already pretty cute, but I thought I could make him even cuter. I removed the metal flag and the wood crow from his back, and then I painted his wool with some light green chalk paint. I also touched up the black paint on his face and legs, and later painted his ears black too. I found this lifetime supply of moss at Home Goods for just $14.99. Unbeknownst to me, at this point, my camera clicked off. So, unfortunately or fortunately, you'll have to imagine me gluing the moss clumps to the sheep's body. Rather than returning the black crow, I chose a colorful bird from my stash and added that and a small bird nest that I made by twisting some Spanish moss into a circle. For this next project, I'm going to combine a thrift store wood bowl with two cutting boards. You'll need some way to cut your bowl in half. I used a table saw. I sanded one half all the way down to its natural wood and left one half stained. To make it seem like that the bowl is an organic part of the cutting board, I decided to round off the bottom corners of the cutting board to the shape of the bowl. I traced around the curves of the bowl onto the cutting board and then used my jigsaw to cut along the line. Then I went over the cut edge with my orbital sander to smooth everything down. I needed to cut down the stained half to a smaller size to fit a more narrow cutting board that I had picked up at Home Goods on clearance for just $4.99. And then I rounded the bottom corners of that cutting board too. First, I used wood glue to attach the edge of the bowl to the bottom of the cutting board, and I let that glue dry for about 10 or 15 minutes before I came back with my brad nailer to nail the bowl in place. I probably didn't need to nail the bowl because once wood glue is completely cured, it is incredibly strong, often stronger than the wood itself. For 
the next project, I wanted to combine three separate items, a broken orb, the base to a lamp left over from a previous project, and a random wood finial from my stash. I used Gorilla Glue to attach the orb to the lamp base. Then I tried to even out the broken resin at the top of the orb before I glued the finial in the hole. Once the Gorilla Glue was completely dry, I spray painted the entire piece with a coat of Zinser White Primer. Then I applied a bead of caulk around the joints where the pieces were joined together and I let the caulk dry for about 30 minutes. Next, I mixed some salt wash and latex paint together and brushed this over the entire piece. As I mentioned earlier, using a textured paint like a salt wash mix helps to unite a variety of different materials. Once the paint was dry, I distressed the piece with some sandpaper and then brushed on a coat of antiquing wax, immediately wiping away the excess. Next, I brushed a little Mod Podge in various spots and then sprinkled on some cinnamon to give it a rusty appearance. Once I was happy with how it looked, I sealed it by brushing on a coat of clear wax. I thought I was going to be done at this point, but then I decided that the lamp base needed a little something extra. So I wrapped a piece of Dollar Tree metal ribbon around the center and super glued the ends together. Then I painted and antiqued it to match the rest of the piece. I'm calling this next project the Franken Planter because I joined together some rather disparate items. I thrifted this stand for $1.99 and I have no idea what it was used for. So please leave me a comment if you know what it is. I painted it with light gray chalk paint, but in retrospect, I wish I had used white. I found this previously thrifted planner in my stash that fit perfectly inside the stand and I painted it with the same gray chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed both pieces with some sandpaper. Next, I applied a large floral IOD rub-on transfer to the side of the planter. Then I took a similar image from the same IOD package and transferred it to the metal stand so that it would mirror the image on the planter. Then I used some sandpaper to distress the floral image and to clean up the edges of the metal stand. I still had one of those metal butterflies left, so I transferred a couple of leaf images onto the butterfly wings. And then I used sandpaper again to remove the excess transfer and clean up the edges. Finally, I hot glued the butterfly to the metal stand. Then I sealed everything with a coat of white wax, wiping away the excess. I was hoping the combination of the distressing and the use of the white wax would give the piece a more aged appearance. While thrift shopping, I often find very nice faux flowers stuck in acrylic water that has turned yellow. There are a number of ways that you could salvage these, but this is my favorite way. I like to break the vase with a hammer and free the faux flowers from the acrylic water. I put the vase in a plastic bag 
before breaking it so all the glass pieces will stay contained. Sometimes I can pull the flowers out of the acrylic water and other times I need to use wire cutters to trim them at their base. Now I can use the nice faux flowers without being constricted by their original vase. I decided to add a small rub-on transfer to this small silver pitcher to use as a vase for these lovely roses. I hope you'll let me know which of today's projects was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy thrift flips like this, here's another video I think you may like.